Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery Podcast. Today we're with Mr. David Williams. What's going on, man? Oh, yo, yo, what's going on, my friend? How are things? How are things? Things are good. Things are great, man. Good to see you. Uh, I see you're still rocking out the, the best dressed guy here. Uh, <laughs> well, you know who, who may give you a little bit of a, uh, a run for your money is that that uh, guy, uh, what, what the heck, Francesco on uh, Tim Story's oh, yeah. call. Yeah. You know, you know? uh, no, he's dressed pretty sharp for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Francesco, yeah. Um, and he was on our podcast last week, coincidentally. But it's oh, great it's to have you, man. Uh, yeah, no, I'm glad to be here. It was cool. Yeah. 100%. And it was cool to spend some time with you uh, last, well, actually, it's not last week, it's two, two weeks ago now. We got to know each other. Uh, we, we we spent some time at the TEDx Stages event. Um, and that, that was fun, huh? Ta- yeah, no, ta- was awesome ta- what, what was that experience like? They had uh, 30,000 people apply and over 6,000 live auditions. It was pretty cool. We both made it into the top, uh, top 130. So it was pretty good. But no, I think it was a great yeah. experience. I mean, for me, the reason I entered it was, you know, I think the win for me was it just made me compress time on becoming a better speaker. So I know anytime I enter a competition like that, it makes me just go all in. Uh, So I knew it was going to create that pressure chamber for me to kind of go all in on something that's important and passionate to me because I want to get on more stages, more digital stages, more physical stages um, for our projects and our businesses. And uh, it was a really good experience. And then I'd say being there is just, you know, great environment, awesome humans, and uh, just an overall, you know, good, uh, good, good run through of everything. Yeah. And before we get into it and, you know, tell people, uh, you know, who you are, how successful you are, what you're up to, what was your biggest takeaway from, from going through that, that stages experience? Yeah, I'd say the biggest takeaway, I mean, preparedness, right? It's just like anything in life. There was, uh, you know, I felt you and I were probably one of the, you know, one of the more prepared there in terms of preparing ready for a, you know, 30 second, 60 second, 90 second talk. There was so many people there that I think that just kind of walked in trying to wing it. There was a lot of good talent Mm. there, but I've always been a big fan of, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't want to work hard. And, uh, you know, when I dial in on something, I sometimes go to the point of insanity. I went, uh, I think it was over 420 times. I practiced my 30 second, 60 second and 90 second dialed in. So I think that, you know, allowed me to show up at a different level, um, being prepared like that. And then maybe some others that, that were there because everybody was phenomenal. Obviously it was there, but you know, there was some, just like any event that you go to that just, you know, probably didn't put the same amount of reps that they should have put into that sort of thing. And I think the biggest, you know, takeaway there was, you know, getting down, dialing in the goal, and then uh, just putting in the work. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you had my vote and uh, to move to the next round. So, no, same um, here, brother. I was surprised. I was surprised that your name wasn't up there. I was surprised my name wasn't up there. But hey, you know what? We come back next year stronger. That's all you can do, yeah, right? No, absolutely. Um, so, so you are uh, you own multiple businesses. Um, how many, talk to us about your business. I mean, you own an insurance company, you own a technology, right? Company, uh, each of your business, you're doing over a million in revenue, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess what, several, what other business do you own? Our, uh, you know, larger business, you know, we're in the insurance space. We probably, uh, under management close to 55 million in, uh, you know, total premium. Uh, that's where I started out in that space, in the insurance space. And then, mm. uh, had the, our first seven figure exit and I can get into my background in a moment. But then after that, um, you know, we acquired more insurance agencies on the independent side, really grew things with partners and then started some other ventures after my, after my first exit there. So we got a, um, multi seven figure staffing and recruiting company, one of the top staffing and recruiting solutions in the insurance space. And we, uh, of course do work outside of that space, but that's where I came from. So we got a lot of clientele there. Uh, a couple of software companies, uh, uh, Ricochet 360, all-in-one dialer, CRM marketing platform. And then we recently created a software, uh, Jarvi, that uses automation and AI to automate um, and put on autopilot the hiring process and training process inside of an organization. And then, uh, you know, start doing a lot of masterminds and, and really stacking and racking, putting money back into the real estate. Um, so we operate, uh, probably got $15 million worth of, uh, uh, Airbnbs, um, a little bit of commercial real estate in our portfolio. 
And then most recently, we started a, uh, a passion project that's uh, a mastermind for families and kids, uh, where parents and kids get together uh, and basically teach them the things they don't teach enough in school, faith, family, freedom, finances, and fitness, try to bring in business experts, influencers, and celebrities to influence and get kids excited about education and fill in the gaps where, you know, not knocking the education system, but we all know there's a lot of valuable fundamentals that set you up for life that are just not taught in the infrastructure of our education system in America and probably most places across the globe like that. Mm. Well, give us a, so I, I, this wasn't really where I was planning to go, but you said it. So give us, what are a couple of those values that, that are not being taught that should be taught? You know, I think, you know, one, one of them is from uh, faith, you know, that's been a big guiding principle in my life from a core value perspective. You know, I think mm. schools have all the knowledge in the world, all the textbook, all the data in the world. It's a question of if they're teaching the right knowledge and the right data at times, but it's full of knowledge, right? And same with college. But one thing that I found that schools, high schools, colleges typically don't teach is wisdom. You know, wisdom is typically earned. Wisdom is typically gotten from mentors. And I think that's where a lot of our program comes in is we bring in real world experience because there's one thing to teach data and practical knowledge. But then the wisdom from the experience itself is really what, you know, can give you the guiding compass on your journey where you're trying to go that cuts your journey from 10 years down to 10 months by, uh, you know, just getting the wisdom of others. And that's just missing in our school system. And then faith big thing for me in my life because there's so many times where life just hits you sometimes life isn't easy and a lot of times you got to have faith when you're going out there whether it's starting a business you're starting a career a relationship um we live in this world of instant gratification wish everything came easy wish everything came fast i wish it was overnight and a lot of people give up when it doesn't come overnight right and i think that's where faith mm. comes that's why I like the, you know, the parable that Tim Story always likes to share because we're in Tim Story's mastermind together. And he talks about the farmer mentality. Uh, he always talks about what a great farmer does. He's got to have a lot of faith because what does he got to do? He's got to till his land, uh, show up and plant the seeds. And then that's where really the faith comes in because what do you got to do from there? You got to show up and water it every single day for not just days, but weeks, but months. And it could all the way be for your year before you even see anything shoot above the surface, right? Everything's mm. happening beneath, but it's not visible. And then that's where our faith comes in to show up every single day in a lens of faith, knowing that beneath the surface, the things that we're not doing, the things that we're sowing are coming to fruition. And I think life is just that way, whether it's our relationships, understand that we're showing up every day. We're not going to get everything that we want in this world tomorrow when it comes to our relationships. We're not going to get everything we want in this world tomorrow when it comes to our business and our finances. We're not going to get everything in the world that we want tomorrow when it comes to our health. But if we sow the seeds every single day, what is it like a great farmer, right? This farmer that shows up every single day, they got that huge harvest of abundance. But the farmer that maybe lacks faith and decides, hey, you know what? I can't see anything anyway, so I'm not going to show up today. Or I'm not going to show up for three days. Or maybe I'm not going to water my field for the week. Well, all it takes is like a day, two or three to kill your crop and all the work that you've put forth is gone. And I think mm. there, there's something to be said about that showing up every single day, showing up in the lens of faith and just being, uh, being consistent to get to where we want to be in life. Yeah. I love it, man. Um, 100%. Now you're, uh, you're out in Vegas right now. I know you're out. Yeah, um, I, got the, I got that big spear behind me right here, <laughs> the Venetian. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you just invested to be with, um, Dave Meltzer and, and, and you're, 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 you're very, you're massively successful. I mean, I, I, I got to spend four days with you and I mean, oh, even you this, both. even your approach with your car, you're like, yeah, I, I bought, I bought two Corvettes so I could rent them out on a website and someone else pays the car payments for me. Yeah. So it's just like all the, uh, what, what, why, why are you, so you're out in Vegas now around, other, you know, these other, why, why are you investing money to be out there and, be in these rooms with people like like who you with Jim Quick and Dave Meltzer and these guys. 
Yeah, because I mean, I think you know, it's like the old age old saying: your 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 network is your net worth, right? So it's being around the right people. And then uh, you know, I found a long time ago too that I had to just keep pushing myself outside of my comfort zone to get in more and more rooms that made me feel uncomfortable, and just keep leveling it up into different rooms with different relationships. And um, I found during that process, it just really grown as a person, really grown as a human, grown my businesses, grown my relationship, my health, you know, everything all walks of life by getting in those right rooms with the right people. And then the second that, you know, maybe I start to be a resemblance of one of the smarter guys in the room, I got to find a, a different room to be in that's kind of next level that puts me back into that place again and humbles me again of being that, you know, maybe the least smartest person in the room so I can get back into a phase of growth. So for me, it's really, you know, investing, being around the right people, networking with the right people. And I think doing big things in life, you can't do it alone. You typically got to ask for help. You, I mean, you can do it alone sometimes, but it could take you decades to get it done. But when you got help from the right, righteous people that have the same similar values as you, um, there's so much more you can accomplish through collaboration. So, so have you always been like this disciplined and like, like even with your talk, I think about like the, you know, you, you play, like you literally, how many, you did that, how many, what, four or 500 times the two minute talk before you yeah, got, yeah. you got ready to go and sit. Do you, do you, how do you approach everything like that in life? Have you always been like that? Or did you, when did you I become like that? I learn to be that way. Right. So as a kid growing up, you know, I was labeled with learning disabilities, severe learning disability. They tried to medicate me, uh, tried to put me in special classrooms, told me I wasn't going to be low potential wasn't good enough, um, you know, to do a lot of different things. I had to go down the route of being a trade, not knocking trades, but they said, you know, academically, you're not strong. So you would be best suited in a trade. So, I, you know, I faced all these labels growing up, but I had a dad, still have a dad, um, that, you know, really taught me the value of hard work. Um, cause we had a, we had a brother in life that he went down the wrong path. He's unfortunately no longer with us. And uh, when that happened and he went down that wrong path, my dad really stepped up as a man and took it to heart and took extreme ownership of it. Um, he wanted to make sure that me and my sister never went down that wrong path. So to afford the things he couldn't afford, he had two businesses. He started, you know, putting gutters on houses and snow plowing. And uh, he would work around the clock seven days a week. Um, mm. Just keep us busy so we couldn't get into trouble. And I remember him getting up to super early, go out to work on the truck and some of the worst of weather, he would show up every single day. It doesn't matter, rain, sleet, snow. He's like on a ladder up there getting it done. And then right when he's done with a, you know, 10 hour work day, he's going out and snow plowing. But not only was he going out and running the business, but he did it with such a level of integrity that when he put his name on something, it was perfection. And his gutter business, I remember uh, you know, I was working on the job with him one time and we we're putting up gutters and it was literally like an eight. The pitch of the gutter was about an eighth of an inch off. It probably wouldn't have affected it. Um, nobody would have noticed, um, but he noticed and he knew it wasn't perfect. Um, mm. They still functioned everything. And he's like, I don't put my name on everything that's not perfect. And by doing that and always doing what's right for the customer, you never have to worry about customers. And that always stuck with me for life. And I remember we ripped everything off the house at his expense put brand new gutters back up on the whole thing, stayed there until the late hours. And that's just how he was. And then when he went to snow plow, he'd get done with that and just plow around the clock. And it said in his contract, two inches. So we get hit with a lot of lake effect snow out upstate New York. And by the time he was done plowing a hundred driveways, there was literally two inches on the ground again. And just because he's a man of his word and it said that in his contract, he would go around and start plowing all over again and just do that around the clock and operate on no sleep. Um, and he just, you know, did that for our family, never saved for retirement, never put clothes on his back. But I think through osmosis, I watched him operate and I started to realize that, hey, while I didn't have a lot of God given talent in a lot of areas that I could close the gap by following suit of my dad. And my mom was a hard worker, too. And uh, I could close the gap just by outworking and putting in the level of discipline and work that most people aren't willing to do, especially this day and age. That's a rare commodity. Everybody wants everything easy, right? So when it came to, you know, academics, that's what got me through school. I just had to outwork and mm. work way harder than everybody else. When it came to the game of baseball I love so much, man, I didn't have much God-given talent at all.
but I showed up and I would bat in the batting cages. I still got blisters from when I was a kid, I think here. And I would, I would hit every day until my hands bled. And I went on to be one of the only ones to play college ball because all the other kids that had the talent, eventually I started to close the gap and started to supersede their talent because that work ethic that they weren't putting forth, you know, eventually turned into competence and confidence and that turned into a skill. And then my skill started to outweigh theirs and led me to playing college ball. And then I think it just, from there, I just started to realize that pattern in life when I got my first job at Corbett City. Um, did the same thing. I worked everybody in the room, became one of the youngest store managers all the way to my entrepreneurship uh, journey. And, you know, that goes back to my, you know, my quit story. That's kind of where things began at Circuit City. I, that was my first job. I just went in as a part-time, thought it was going to be a part-time job, sales associate, selling car stereos. Um, came in, put in the work, thought I was starting over, but realized I was building on the foundation of work ethic that I had and kind of the, that discipline and that cadence that I built in other areas of my life when I was younger, started outperforming everybody in the store, uh, became the top salesperson in the company, one of the youngest promoted store managers in history. My career was on a trajectory and, you know, we get caught in our bubble sometimes. And I was just looking to climb that corporate ladder, be a regional manager, all that. And then all of a sudden one day life happened. I woke up and I couldn't walk. My ankles were so swollen, my feet, my toes, inflammation, pain all over my body. I couldn't get up, barely get out of bed, was on a cane. So I had to go on uh, disability and again, face of labels. Doctors were telling me I was going to be on disability for life. And I, I knew God didn't put me on this earth to be a guy laying on the couch on disability for life. I had a bigger purpose than that. So I got to the six month mark. I still wasn't well and uh, had a decision to make to either staff will work on disability. Like my doctor said, or try to get back to work. I forced myself to get back to work. I was now in a bad financial spot, not working, get paid for six months borrowing money to pay the mortgage to try to stay afloat, get back to work, finally get in the swing of things a little bit, facing, you know, still all this pain and health challenges. And then all of a sudden, um, life happens again and Circuit City files chapter 11, lays off 25,000 people. So now I'm broke, jobless, dealing with all these health issues. And uh, that's where my faith came in and I just prayed on it. Um, had a friend of the family that was in the insurance business doing really well. Thought to myself, if he can do it, I could do it. Again, everybody's saying, Dave, you're sick. Most businesses fail anyways. You're certainly going to fail. But I had a deeper drive to me that. Um, so instead, I did something crazy, wrote out a check for a million bucks. And it wasn't about the money. But I put that check up, looked at it every single day, eventually took my unemployment card after losing my job at Circuit City and put it next to it in the frame. And so I don't remember, forget where I came from and just focused and focused and focused on that check. How could I do? How could I cash it? And um started getting my insurance license at night, did all that and uh, ended up meeting a company, Allstate Insurance, uh, decided I was going to open up an insurance agency. But, you know, one small problem, I didn't have the money and I had some debt and uh, had some medical debt to pay off. And those were two barriers to prevent me from opening up an agency. So I, you know, prayed on it some more and, you know, it really felt like it was God's design because about two weeks later, there was an insurance broker in the same shopping mall Circuit City was across from a DMV about 100 feet away that closed their doors. And I knew that was a great location just intrinsically, but I knew the reason it failed because the person just didn't work. You know, they're on their cell phone every single day. They weren't going out and engaging people. I'm like, that's going to be my location. I'm going to do it different. Now I got to find the money. So then the liquidators came in and they said, Dave, all the open merchandise, uh, customer returns, you name it, we got to get rid of it, pennies and a dollar. And it was almost like, man, it wasn't even my idea. It was like God's voice came out of me. It was like instantaneously, just like a reflex. I was like, what if I made it easy and I just bought up everything? They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what if I just, we came up with a number and I bought up all the electronics you're talking about. And I just took care of it all in one shot from all Circuit City stores within four hours a year. They, they agreed. I took the last seven grand in my name after penalties out of my 401k, bought up about 70, 80,000 worth of electronics, filled my living room to the ceiling, um, then arbitraged it, hustled it all on eBay while I was getting my insurance license, while I was closing down Circuit City, um, was doing that in the in the late hours and um, ended up selling online, paying off my medical debt, raising the minimum capital I needed for my first insurance agency. And then I just came in and hustled every single day. I was not on my phone in that building. I was out there like my life was on the line because it was because I hired two people and had enough capital to survive for two months. If I didn't get revenue going quickly, I started ripping people out of line at the DMV, pulling them over, had no idea what I was doing, but I figured out how to learn insurance quickly. Um, 
scaled that company to multiple locations uh, in about nine years, over 22 million in reoccurring revenue. That was our first uh, seven figure exit, ended up selling that and then got back into the game with a partner um, on the insurance side. And that's where we did our recruiting company, the software companies. Obviously I went cash that check, one of the proudest moments of my life. Got to hand my parents the keys to their dream retirement home. And that's really what the check meant to me. It wasn't about money. It was, I needed to create a vehicle that I could have a life on my own terms, that I wasn't living in my labels of being on disability, um, having my health issues control me, working in retail, because I couldn't work in retail, work for somebody else anymore, couldn't be on my feet. My health wouldn't allow it. And that just wasn't, my heart wasn't there anymore. And uh, so that check meant freedom. That check meant providing for my wife, um, taking care of my family, giving back to my community and then giving back to my heroes, my mom and dad that sacrificed everything for me because they, you know, were had an outlook of retirement really in poverty wages, you know, because they had their retirement, social security, maybe 1800 bucks a month, what family can live on that. Um, I'm blessed to be able to pay all their bills now, bought them their dream retirement home, handed them the keys to a their first brand new car, brand new Cadillac and um, proud of, you know, some of the proudest, proudest okay. moments giving back to my dad and my mom that way. Amen, brother. Well, uh, Dan, I love, I always love when I hear that story too. Uh, you shared it with me a couple of times about Circuit City and uh, it's just it's just brilliant, man. Um, just shows, and I, the other thing that you said, I've never heard this before, but I, I wrote it down is, um, is uh, work ethic is your talent. Yeah. Like talk, hard talk to us about talent. that. I, 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 hard, hard work beats talent. Yeah. When doesn't want to work hard, right? You know, that was my superpower that I found. Well, I've heard that. I've heard the hard work beats talent, but I've never, like, I feel like the way you said it was like work ethic is yeah, my, my talent. Yeah, that was my, that was my superpower that I found <laughs> navigate me through life. And um, I've always found in any room that I walked in, there's typically a cap at the level of people are willing to work. And if I could come in like my dad, because he was kind of like, <laughs> abnormal superhuman person that I've watched my whole life. Just nobody worked like him, you know, nobody mm. sacrificed. I, I've still never met anybody that sacrificed for their family the way he did. Like I'm talking about no vacations. I'm talking about no social time. I'm talking about in, you know, I think balance is important. So I don't want to send the wrong message here, but for him, I don't think he saw any other option because he just didn't want to lose another son. Didn't want to lose another daughter. So he really stepped up as a man and just sacrificed everything for us. And just watching that um, was just such a valuable lesson. And it just it just taught me that there's just nobody that that operates that way. And if I could go into a place that maybe I have a disadvantage, my advantage could be operating just at this insane, crazy level that nobody is willing to do. And the compounded effect of that really quickly is – and maybe sometimes not so quickly could be over the course of a year or however it might be. Eventually the tides will rise and um, close that gap and then reverse the script. Right. All of a sudden through that work ethic, the, the talent comes right. And the skills come and now they supersede mm -hmm. those that we're maybe competing against. I love it, man. And and uh, sorry, sorry about your brother, by the way. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think you told me that. Um, but no. sorry, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, he went. Uh, um, you know, they say we're the average of the five people we're hanging around the most. Unfortunately, we both had great parents, but he had the wrong five people. That's another reason we started our our family mastermind program to give kids that right community because he got with the wrong crowd. You know, got into drugs and addiction, and that just took him down a path that it just got gripped so tight on him he couldn't get out. So we lost him at the age of uh, forty nine. So we did the program in his name to try to save other Gary Williams before they get to that point and they go down that path. So I want I want to get to the kids in a minute, but I do want you to talk about your um your company. Uh, it's uh, Jarvi. Um, Something I'm very interested in too. I just need to commit to time. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, and because we we have a huge platform ourselves right now, but I think you know. So, but talk 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 about that and 
and what it what it does and um and 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 then we're gonna get in i want to talk about the kids and what you're doing with kids yeah no absolutely yeah so one of the things i love to do now is just bring ideas to life and create that's i'm a visionary at heart love being the creator i kind of started to build my businesses to where it didn't feel like work anymore and it, it, i was living in the place i was most passionate about you know where where I wasn't as passionate, but I would do the things I needed to do is just, you know, in the thick of things, in the mud, um, having everything revolve around me. You know, I did that, made that mistake building businesses. And then after exiting my first company, realized there's a different way to do it, right? We can get highly capable people around us. So now what I'll do is when I start a company is I'll go in every single position, master that position with somebody alongside me first, because I believe as a leader, you can't be an effective leader. Uh, unless you understand it to the point of mastery, you've lived in the place that you're trying to lead people in and I do that every position in my organization until I have somebody that's 60% of me. And then that creates the framework for me where now I got a company that's running by itself without me. Um, you know, I'm obviously there for support and in, in everything else, but it can run on its own legs and eventually start doing that with all my businesses. So I could be in the place to create and start more businesses so we came up with a, I came up with an idea for a software to automate, try to solve some of the biggest problems that I found out in any business. Every business was having a people problem. Every business has a lack thereof of training problem. Every business is shaky when it comes to processes and SOPs. So like, how do we create maybe a software solution um, as the next evolution of our recruiting company that can solve those problems? And that's where Jarvi was born. Uh, basically what Jarvi does is it allows you to post out to all the different job boards. And then uh, the problem is when you're posting out to a job board, you get a resume. What does everybody got these days? They got chat GDP. You got the perfect resume from everybody now. And now mm. you're spending your time spinning your wheels, talking to every single person that necessarily isn't the right person for you. So we uh, created the solution to help automate that, systematize this. Now you submit, uh, somebody submits their resume. There's a virtual button that pops up after submission to start their virtual interview. Uh, if you were the company, it would pop up with a basically a video of you giving a 60, 90 second elevator speech, why you're the greatest company on earth to work for, why you're different than anyone else, what differentiates you, your company culture. And then goes into the first video interview question. Once they're done listening to that video interview question, it pops up, ask them to give permission to their microphone and camera on their smartphone or their laptop. Then they can reply back into the platform. Now you're not just getting a resume but you're actually getting a video profile of the person, how they showed up in the interview, their tonality, their energy, so you can make a good decision on them. And then, you know, we found a lot of people like to do assessments, but guess who doesn't like to do assessments? Like the candidate, they, most candidates don't want to spend 20, 30 minutes. And then that was bottlenecking the hiring process, causing a lot of people to ghost, we found. So we actually created a couple different technologies that actually does multiple different assessments on the candidate using AI instantaneously without them ever figuring out a question. So one of the most uh, prominent assessments in the world, the DISC assessment, uh, we have a DISC assessment model that the second they submit their resume, uh, we basically take that data and search their digital footprint online, look at their LinkedIn profile, scan their resume. We take all that data on that individual and come up with an 85% or better accurate disk assessment. You can make it 100% accurate by feeding it questions and data if you really wanted to, but 85% accurate is pretty powerful. And then it also auto analyzes the interview. So when they respond to the question and the video goes back into the platform, it transcribes it and analyzes the audio and rates them on eight different cadences of you know confidence measurement, if they're a cultural fit, and it'll give them eight different scores on if they're a good fit for that position and for your company instantaneously. Oh. And then if you like them and you agree with it and you mark them a four or five star, it triggers an automated workflow where you can auto schedule them, auto book them for a one-on-one -on -one interview, send out a background check, reference point uh, via text message, email, the whole nine automates it. And then the hiring piece or the training piece once they do that, you can have all your processes and SOPs inside the platform. But then just like a Lightspeed VT or a Teachable or a Trainual, you can create all your own training content and video content. But I found with all those platforms, people don't learn through watching a video. What do they learn through? Doing. And what do they learn through? Putting in the reps like we've been talking about on this call. Like, right, to, to master the talk, we had to put the reps in to be able to get on stage. 
that's where mm. we, we find people lack. Like we didn't watch a video on somebody else speaking and then all of a sudden go crush the talk. No, we, we, we did a little bit of that, watched other people speak, formulated our talk, but then we put in the reps over and over and over again to be able to go master the stage. That's the same thing in sales, the same thing in customer service, same thing in everything else. And our system actually is one of the, the, the only and first platforms that does that. You create your training content of the perfect pitch. Once they're done listening to that three minute video, the perfect pitch, it pops up, activates their webcam on their smartphone or their laptop and their microphone, and they have to rehearse it and live role play back into the platform as many times as you want them to on a day-to-day basis on a schedule. So you can say every morning at 9 a.m., I want my sales team and my service team to role play these specific scripts back into the platform five, 10 times. And then after putting in the reps 20, 30, 40 times inside the platform, you start to notice the fluidity of that person. They go from really shaky with that script to all of a sudden it coming out and flowing like second nature. So now when they get on a sales call, customer service interaction, like it, it's so fluid. It's like they've been there four dozen times before and it accelerates that learning curve, cuts the training cycle down exponentially, reduces turnover because now you got highly trained people that are in front of your customers rather than people that are trying to train on your customers. And uh, we just, we're excited about it. We think it's going to revolutionize, uh, the business space when it comes to hiring and training. I love it. Well, you know, I, I, I love it for the uh, training training side of it. So that's why what has me excited about, uh, you know, jumping in there and and, uh, and and understanding what it does. I love the the element with the role play part. So um, if somebody's interested in, in that, Dave, what's the best way to get some information on that system? Yeah, you can just go to jarvi.io and do a uh, fill out a demo jarvi.io we'll get on a brief demo and uh it's super super affordable too and then we can uh get anybody set up with that for sure all right awesome and and i want to just uh you know before we wrap i do want to yeah i mean you're doing a lot with kids i know we didn't spend a lot of time on that but you have uh fifth degree academy um yeah so talk to us about that that with uh tim story we did a a free two-day live event brought some of the biggest speaker names in from Tim to Dave Meltzer to Jim Quick, Jimmy Darts, uh, Eric Thomas, Cole Hatter, Mark Lack. We had, a, a you know, Gloria Mailfield Banks, Danil Delgado. They're all teaching kids and families two days straight, six hour days. And we broke a world Guinness world record for the most amount of kids and parents to learn about financial literacy in a four hour window. Then that launched our mastermind. And now we go um, every other Tuesday night. We bring in uh, experts, influencers, celebrities. Uh, we just had some viral YouTubers that had you know, about a billion views on all their social media platforms combined. And you know, they talked about the art of, you know, because because everybody's trying to be an influencer online, but I don't think many people are doing it with the right intentions. So we brought them in, how to do it with the right intentions, do something you love, doesn't happen overnight. Same thing, 10,000 hours of hard work and really taught kids and parents how they can put in the work to get what they want in life, but then monetize it so they can do what they love where it doesn't feel like work. Whether that's being an influencer, it's like the same formula you can apply to just about any career or or business. And we'll teach these sort of fundamentals, give homework assignments to kids too. Like um, after some of our calls, we'll do things like, hey, here's a framework to build household core values that you live by. All of our businesses have core values, but nobody thinks of my family doesn't have core values that we operate by that's literally on a plaque on the wall. Um, so in our core values, uh, Williams always finds a way. You know, we show up in integrity when everything that we do, we always leave people better off. Uh, we work hard, we play hard. Uh, put God first in every single thing that we do. You know, Williams never quits. Uh, Williams always shows up every single day. And um, just those family values there that, you know, we taught, Hey, mom and dad and kids, every family is going to be different, but sit around the table and come up with those together. And it's not just mom and dad holding the kids accountable, those values, but it's strengthening the foundation of the family unit, knowing that, hey, mom and dad might show up one day, come home, have a bad day from work, and they're not living in the confines of the value that the family agreed on. And maybe it's the kids that are holding mom and dad accountable. And that's what's really tying a strong tie to the family unit. You know, vision boards, different things like that to really help kids like my brother never discovered his why. Um, Giving kids a community of the right like-minded kids. So every call, it's all other kids and parents that are just as excited about learning and leveling up in life. So they got that the right 
influence around them in addition to in, to the knowledge. And then we're just excited about it because we're getting bigger and bigger names. We got Dane Cook to agree to do a call coming up in the future. We got Rapper Exhibit. Um, he's going to be streaming in virtually with us and talking to kids about his uh, you know journey, how he went down the the wrong path in life, got the wrong start, learned that the hard way, um, and then just built a great life where now he's a servant to others and uh, you know a big believer, big person of faith, and a servant to others now. So we, we're starting to pick at some steam where the goal is is try to get you know influencers that excite kids about education because I can come on there. And, you know, parents can teach kids one thing, but sometimes it's hearing the same message from somebody different, from a different purview, yeah. a different angle that reinforces our message that really gets it to resonate. You know, all of a sudden there's a big YouTuber that's on there and all of a sudden the kids are all ears and the same thing I could say or a parent could say coming out of the mouth of one of them is all of a sudden gold now. So our goal is to influence yeah. the influencers, excite them around education and just, uh, Try to create a try to create a world of next generation world shakers that you know go out there and change the world for the better. Amazing. Well, you are certainly out there changing the world for the better, my man. Hey, any connection to the Williams F1 team? No connection. Know? Unless there's like a deep uh um yeah. connection there, I don't know about. <laughs> well, look into it, uh, cause uh, you're familiar with F1, I'm assuming, yeah, yeah. right? You have Corvette. Yeah, they have a, there's a Williams team. So I just was curious. You mentioned the Williams values. It made me think of the Oh, yeah, yeah. Really, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. Uh, um, awesome, man. So if somebody wants to get more information on the Fifth Degree Academy, what's the best way to do that? Fifthdegree.com. So it's five, the number five, T-H, degree, D-E-G-R-E-E.com, fifthdegree.com. And then uh, just me personally, you can just go to bookdavidwilliams.com, bookdavidwilliams.com uh, for more information about me. Get me on your podcast. Get me on your stage. Uh, that's the way to go. Awesome, man. Well, I think uh, what I took from this uh, today is really it's about hard work, work ethic, putting in the reps. And I feel like you've, you've achieved a lot by just continuing to show up, man, and, and, and focus. So congrats. Awesome. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, give us a final thought. Yeah, you got it. A hundred percent. I'm glad I had you on. So give us a, the final word is yours. Like what do people that listen to this the last, you know, 35 minutes, what do you want them to walk away with? So I'd say the final thought, you know, to really walk away with, I would just really anywhere you want to go in life. It's, you know, one being equally balanced, right. In our health, in our wealth, in our relationships, in our faith, um, because, I share that because I had to learn the hard way is every time I went all in on one of those areas and I maybe didn't go all in equally on the rest, I became even keel, kind of like the chair I'm sitting in, where it's all of a sudden, if there's one leg missing, I'm going to tip over, right? And that's kind of how our lives uh, work out when we're not balancing those areas. So to be balanced in all those areas, and then once you're balanced in all those areas, it's like putting in the work, finding the right mentors with the right wisdom that can help mm. you where you want to go and then surrounding yourself with the right network of people that are on the same journey because it gets lonely at the top the further that you go up to the top it gets incredibly lonely and, and it's tough to do big things alone in life so surrounding yourself with the with the right influence the right mentors and then having that right degree of work focusing on those 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 four core pillars your health your wealth your family and relationships and your faith. Awesome, my man. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for being on the show. And uh, yeah, I look forward to connecting with you again really, really soon and breaking some oh, more bread. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on.